Now I've made a copy of the diagram that we're given in this part, part A. We have a uniform rod AB. It's on a support at C, 0.9 meters from the end A. The rod is of length 1.5 meters. So it's very important that in questions like this that you do draw a sketch. Anyway, let's put a few lengths on. We've got this remaining length C to B. Uh, it's got to make 1.5 meters, so that's going to mean that this is 0.6 meters. Let's pop that in there. Okay, I don't really need that 1.5 meters anymore, so we'll remove that. We need a few forces acting on this. Now, it's a uniform rod, so uh, its weight must act in the middle. Let's say the middle is about there. The rod has a mass of 8 kilograms, so there's going to be the weight of 8g newtons acting downwards at the center. So that's going to mean that the distance from A to the center must be half of the 1.5, so that's going to be 0 0.75 meters. Pop that in there. And that also means that the distance from the where the weight acts to the support has got to be 0 0.15 meters. So again, useful to pop that in there. All right, so just do that. So we've got the measurements in. We've got the one force, the weight of the rod. What else should we put in? Well, we've got a particle attached at B of mass m, so we need to say that we've got the force acting downwards, the weight of the particle, which is going to be mg newtons. Now, to support the forces acting downwards on the rod, there's got to be a force acting upwards, and the only place that that can come from is the support here. So we have a force acting upwards, a reaction, because the rod is in contact with this support here. I'm going to call it R newtons. Now that's all the forces acting on the rod and our job in part A is to figure out the value of M. We've got to show that M is 2. Now in order to find M what I'm going to do is take moments about C. Why C? Because R acts through C, and if I take moments about C, R will not enter the equation. Any forces that pass through the point that you're taking moments do not enter the equation. Okay, so I'm going to say then that we're going to be taking moments about C, and I need a sense that I'm going to have as plus, a positive sense, whether it be clockwise or anticlockwise. I want to find M, and I'd like to keep that positive. So I'm going to say that turning clockwise about C okay, is going to be positive. So I'm going to mark that in as positive that way. Okay, so remembering that moment is the force times the perpendicular distance to the point that you're taking moments about. Okay, We would have, first of all, when we look at the moment produced by mass here, it would be mg times 0.6. I'll put that down, mg multiplied by 0.6. Then we would have this force here, and this force wants to turn the rod anticlockwise about C. So that would be minus, okay, and the force would be 8g. The distance would be 0.15. Remember we said now that R, its moment about C, would be zero because, okay, we've got the force R, but the distance to C is zero. So R times zero would be zero. This is the total moment, and because it's in equilibrium, it must be equal to zero. There's no oval turning effect about C. So all that's left to do now is just solve this. So let's tidy it up. We have 0.6 mg 
and if I do 8G times 0.15 that comes out at 1.2G. Notice I don't work out what G is in this equation. Why? Because I can see that's in each term. Okay, we could divide now by G and it just essentially cancels out. All I need to do now is just rearrange this and if I add 1.2 to both sides that would be 0.6m equals 1.2. I'll put it in anyway, 0.6m equals 1.2. Next just divide both sides by 0.6 and you have m equals 1.2 divided by 0.6 and that comes to 2. And that brings us to the end of part A.